Disillusionment with the actions of Ukraine's military reached the country's parliament. This is how one lawmaker interrupted President Poroshenko as he was praising the armed forces. Many government fighters have left the cities of Slavyansk and Kramatorsk, which had been the epicenter of the resistance, partly because they say they were indefensible and that they couldn't prevent civilian casualties caused by the government bombardment. Now they've withdrawn to the regional capital of Donetsk, they say to regroup and reinforce. Joining me live in the studio, Mark Sloboda, an international affairs lecturer at Moscow State University, to talk more about this. So how much of a turning point in the conflict is the retaking of Slavyansk by the Ukrainian military? Okay, well, first of all, what we have to consider is, as uh, Mark Adamanis, a writer for Forbes, just wrote today uh, in one of his columns, that uh, this does not mean that anyone is winning or losing the Ukrainian uh, civil war. Uh, the conflict. This is far too early to say. Uh, however, we can look at what happened in Slavyansk and the retreat from towns such as Kramatorsk, um, Nikolaeva, and uh, the other outer ring of towns that defended Lugansk and Donetsk. Uh, from a purely military and uh, tactical point of view, we can see that this could be actually be considered a draw or a small success for the self-defense forces. They managed to withdraw most of their uh, arms and forces from an encircled position um, in good order and uh, draw them back uh, to a much more defendable position with a much larger um, body of uh, volunteers uh, uh, to support that is much easier to uh, supply uh, than Slavyansk was. Slavyansk, uh, in their own words, served its purpose as a delaying shield. Basically, the entire military might of this Ukrainian regime, supported by the West, was focused for three months on a small town of 120,000 people. Now, from a political uh, and, if we want to say, moral point, uh, morale point of view, the uh, retreat from Solovansk is a huge defeat and a huge victory that will be paraded on the cameras by the, uh, uh, this oligarch ruler of uh, the regime in Kiev, uh, Petro Poroshenko. Uh, he's already raised up a Ukrainian flag uh, over the uh, retaken uh, government buildings and uh, in Slavyansk, and uh, this will be presented as a, uh, a, at least an initial, the first real success of his uh, state terror and mass repression campaign across the eastern Ukraine, uh, and it will be a big a moral disheartening blow, uh, not only to the people of eastern Ukraine, but also to ordinary Russians as well. Now, what can the locals then expect there now? I mean, at least some modicum of calm? Okay. No, not at all. I, I don't think uh, we, we can really expect seriously to see that at all. We have already seen videos online today of residents of Slavyansk uh, confronting uh, the occupiers of their town, uh, yelling, fascists go away. Uh, and they were not treated very kindly in return. We have seen some very grim results in the previously occupied towns, Sorovka, Nikolaevka, Krasny Lamont. Most of the young middle-aged men are rounded up. Uh, what exactly is being done with them, whether they are being executed or taken off, is not entirely known. We have heard the uh, defense minister of the Ukraine several weeks ago speak openly and, and, and without even any attempting to hide it that all of the citizens of eastern Ukraine, when these towns and cities are reconquered, would be taken to uh, women, children, and men would be taken to filtration camps. Uh, not even really trying to hide the connection with concentration camps, of course. So, uh, wait a second. The defense minister of Ukraine the said there will be concentration well, been, camps. No, he said there would be filtration camps. Uh, okay. Uh, what I'm saying is that this is uh, there's no real difference in this between filtration camps and concentration camps. It's a one word uh, denoted uh, propaganda difference between the two of them. This is not uh, controversial, questionable. This was reported live on TV. The Ukrainian mm -hmm. defense minister stated this, and the really, the, the, the really shocking and disturbing thing is there hasn't been any outcry from the Western press about this. I'll say, so the National Guard is saying that it will search for those who refuse to lay down their arms and question them. Uh, 
you, how do you expect they'll be treated? I expect you'll say not well. Well, uh, I, I don't think there's any secret. The National Guard, this uh, paramilitary force composed mostly of the radicals of the Euro Maidan and ultranationalist groups, as well as International uh, Fascist Brigade, as Al Jazeera has interviewed and reported earlier. Um, uh, these people suffered very heavy losses over the last three months in the siege of Slavyansk and other towns. And they have shown previously in other towns that they are out for a little bit of revenge. Um, I don't, uh, and the people in these towns certainly do not treat them as liberators or heroes, but as uh, they themselves describe them, fascist occupiers. Um, the reports out this morning is that they are already going door to door looking for people uh, who might have uh, remained behind, who helped. Uh, or are perceived as having helped the self-defense forces, and the locals say they are being executed. Now, hopes for peace uh, took a blow when President Poroshenko refused to extend this truce. Do you think there is a possibility of a lasting ceasefire? He has said that there is the possibility of extending it. Okay. Um, yeah, he has uh, unilaterally declared a ceasefire that never, in fact, existed on the ground. It was simply a PR move to present to the European Union in the week in the run-up to the signing of this neoliberal EU association agreement. It never happened on the ground. The artillery shells, the airstrikes never stopped falling on the people of eastern Ukraine. There wasn't any ceasefire before. There won't, certainly won't be any now. Uh, it will be perceived as uh, that the uh, regime has won a military victory. And earlier uh, in the last week, we saw the ultranationalists and fascists uh, gather on the Maidan in Kiev, protesting for a resumption of the war and against the ceasefire. So domestically, uh, with the uh, base of fanatics that uh, Petro Poroshenko depends on to retain power, it would be extremely politically difficult for him to now, after having seen as one a first initial military victory, if it, even if it wasn't in truth that, it will be very difficult for him to return to any kind of even false ceasefire. You have to leave it there. Mark Sloboda, thanks for your time. Thank you.